Right, hey guys, so welcome to a video on Riemann Sphere. It's my favorite part in complex analysis because I, as you can see from this picture, right, a Riemann Sphere is basically, basically you map a complex plane into a unit sphere. Right, and it looks so cool because like a line on the complex plane it actually maps to a circle on the Riemann Sphere, which I'm going to talk to you more about the mapping in a bit. So, all right. So let's consider the number line first, right? Here's a circle, right? Here's a circle I've drawn. It's a unit circle as, because you can see the radius of that circle is one, right? The circle is touching the two points on my number line, one and negative one. But why do I need this circle? Think, think about it. So like, for example, The red point will be the North Pole. And if I draw a line from the North Pole to a number on my number line, so I draw from the North Pole of my circle to negative 2 on my number line, then I will call the intersection of my line with the circle. Yeah, this point, the inter intersection point, I will call this point the represent the representation of negative two on my circle. Okay, so this point represents negative two with my circle. Okay, so negative two is now mapped to a point on the circle. And now let's say we want to map negative three. So what I do is that I draw another line from the North Pole to negative three on my number line. And I'll call that new intersection point negative 3. So now negative 3 is now mapped to a point on the circle. So this point represents negative 3. And if I wish to represent 5 on my number line, if I wish to represent 5 on my number circle, right, here it's like I draw a line from the North Pole to 5 on my number line, and this line intersects with my number circle, and I call that intersection point 5. So this intersection point represents 5 on my number circle. And now like, let's say I want to represent 0 on my number circle. So I just draw a line from the North Pole to 0 on the number line. Draw a line through it. And it will intersect the circle at the South Pole. So the South Pole represents 0 on my number circle. right? So this point represents 0. So every number is mapped to a unique point on the circle, which is kind of cool, right? But now think about this question. Where does positive infinity map onto my circle? And where does negative infinity map onto my circle? Well, because ne let's consider positive infinity first, so that our line will basically looks like a tangent to our nose pole. And well, evidently, for negative infinity, right, it's like, it's literally just the tangent in the other way. So it looks like the North Pole can represent negative infinity and infinity at the same time, right? Okay, tangent to the pole. So now, this is quite interesting. Why? Because like, this number circle idea, it tells us that the two affinities are mathematically identical. They map to the same point on our number circle. So now, let's consider a generalization of our concept. We're mainly interested in the question of how do we define 1 over 0? Well, in most contexts, it's undefined. But for a Riemann sphere context, or no, for the context of this, um, of of the mass represented in this sections, we can actually associate something to the result for one over zero. So let's say finding reciprocals with our number circle. So okay, so this point, this intersection point, right? It represents two on our uh, number line. Say now, I shift up my circle 
by one unit. So it looks like this before, I shift the entire thing up, right? So now it's four on the number line. So actually what I did is equivalent to a mapping of my function, a mapping of x to 2x. So f of x equals to 2x. As you can see, this point on my circle, it used to represent two, but if I shift the sphere one unit upwards, it now represents four, right? So, okay, so that is basically an idea of how do we conceive of mapping or functions with our um, number circle concept. But now I'm going to generalize this into the entire complex, into complex numbers. So we used to only com consider the real number line, right? The real number line, it's here. Now let's consider the entire complex plane. So let's, there's a, that's a point, one plus i on our complex plane, right? That's another no complex number, negative three minus two i, and we also can find its geometric representation in the complex plane. So now instead of using a circle to map my number line, now I'm gonna use a sphere, a unit sphere, to map my complex plane, right? And this is how you map it, right? You start with the north pole of your sphere, right? Suppose there's a number on the number on the complex plane that you want to map to the sphere, right? You draw a line from the north pole to the geometric point on the complex plane of the complex number you wish to map to, and the intersection of that line with the unit sphere will basically represent your complex number on the Riemann sphere, right? So as you can see from this picture. Now let's talk about some interesting geometric properties of Riemann sphere mapping. So now let's say I have a line, a straight line in my complex plane. I want to do a Riemann sphere mapping on it, right? I mapped it. Oh, I got a, I got a circle on my Riemann sphere, which is quite interesting. And now let's think about it. What's happening on the pole? Well, we know that our number, our line in the complex plane, it extends in two directions, right? So like it will reach infinity in these two directions. It can either go or reach, it can reach infinity if I go from top right, or I reach infinity if I goes left of the line to the top left, right? There's two directions of infinity. And these two directions of infinity converges at the pole, the north pole of my Riemann sphere. It's like analogous to the, not, uh, to the circle to the number circle thing we did if we only consider the number line. So yeah, actually, let's let me play this anim animation again, and you can see it. Right. So the projection of a line on Riemann sphere appears as a circle that passes through a pole. So actually, the real axis is just another circle. If we consider from a Riemann sphere perspective, it's not essentially different from a unit circle in a complex plane, but it's rather just drawn vertically rather than horizontally. And it's actually Professor Roger Penrose who said this on his book of Road to Reality. So if we consider what you might have thought as two completely different things, so one is the unit circle on your complex plane, another is your real axis. Well, these have the same geometric properties if we consider them in a Riemann sphere representation. And I have the mapping animations shown below. You can take a look. All right, now let's talk about some interesting properties. So let's say I want to map a square looking shape on my complex plane onto the Riemann sphere. Well, that, look, that maps to a shield. And as you could evidently, you can see, right? Like the shape almost completely changes, right? Just by looking at the Riemann sphere, you can't tell if it's like, it is almost impossible to tell that it's actually a square, like before the mapping. It's all, it's it's actually like kind of impossible to tell, right? The shape changed a lot. Well, now let's consider a smaller a smaller square, and I map it onto my Riemann sphere. Well, now, yeah, I mean, if you look at the shape on the Riemann sphere, you could possibly guess that it's a, it's square, but if you look look at it closely. It, it, it's, it looks more often, it looks more like a shield, right? It looks more than a, like a shield. So yeah, 
But like if I make that thing smaller and smaller, well, if and I now I look at the mapping to the Riemann sphere, almost looks completely the same, right? It looks almost exactly as a square. And that's a property of conformal mapping. So Riemann sphere mapping, the mapping from the complex plane into the unit sphere, they preserve infinitesimal shape. I mean, although size and orientation might change. Another interesting property is that the shape for a circle will never change, right? A circle on the complex plane always gets mapped to another circle on the Riemann sphere. And that's some property that, that can be generalized to conformal mapping, which is basically saying that when we map a shape on our complex plane into the Riemann sphere, the angle preserves. So as you can see, these are all 90 degrees, right? I have a square. Okay, these are all 90 degrees. I map to my Riemann sphere, although it doesn't look like a square anymore. But if I but if we look like if we look at these angles, it's still 90 degrees. So Mapping that locally preserves angle, we call these as conformal mapping. Now let's talk about transformations. Recall that we talked about how can we represent f of x equals to 2x with our number circle. It's like literally just a shift of our circle one unit up. Right? But now let's consider this very simple function f of z equals to negative z. Well, it turns out that this transformation can be visualized as literally just rotating the sphere by 180 degrees. So let's, see, let's say this point, negative 2. So as you can see, before our transformation, it points to negative 2, right? If we rotate it, now it points to 2, which is consistent with our function f of z equals to negative z. Now let's consider another point, 1 plus i. So 1 plus i, it used to be here, right? Okay, once we rotated it, it's now negative minus i, right? Which is also consistent. So now it's, it can be shown that rotating the sphere can represent some functions, f of z equals to negative z. And it turns out that for a Mobius transformation, it basically can be written as f of z equals to az plus b over cz plus d. They can be um, visualized as um, rotating, shifting the Riemann sphere. Right, so that's a study of Mobius transformation. Now we'll talk about some application sides of Riemann sphere. It's mainly in quantum physics where you try to represent qubit uh, as a Riemann sphere. So like. As you know, uh, in quantum in quantum physics, right? Um, let's say a two state system. So our our overall state is a superposition of the two states, and you can represent the state with Riemann sphere. And a good thing about Riemann sphere is that when the state is essentially like, for example, when beta is much more significant than alpha then the phase between the two states doesn't really matter anymore as you would as basically it will just converge to like to the to the up state or to the low to the down state right so like the phase doesn't matter anymore and a good thing about Riemann sphere is that once we said that like for example in our complex plane there there are infinite directions of infinity so like we can go infinity this direction in the imaginary direction in the real direction in the negative real direction there's infinite ways of going to infinity, right? But these, all these infinities are essentially identical to each other. So that is the essential idea of why Riemann sphere representation might be helpful, especially when considering quantum physics, because like in quantum physics, right? When, when like, when beta is definitely more significant than alpha, then the phase doesn't really matter because you know it will definitely just converge to the down states, right? So that's an interesting application style of it. And I hope you enjoyed this session and I hope to see you again. Thank you.